Hello lovely people and welcome back to Hands Hilo where I talk about all things to do with graphic design and running my own freelance graphic design business. In today's video I'm going to show you how I design a website from scratch in Figma and then I'm going to show you how I actually publish that website online so that people can see it without any coding knowledge necessary. The two tools that I'm going to be using today are Figma and Framer. As a graphic designer, we obviously don't learn website design or how to code websites when we study design. So it can be really scary. And thanks to tools like Framer, I can do all of this myself without having to rely on a developer or work with the developer. I can manage it all personally and see it go live as well. If you've been around for a while, you most definitely would have seen this video, which was a branding passion project that I did and how I built a brand from start to finish. In today's video, I'm going to be taking this passion project, Sunbliss, and I'll be designing a website for them and publishing it live. The thing I like about Framer is it's very similar to the Figma layout, and obviously I use Figma for all my web design, so having something that's similar does make it a lot easier to pick up on the software. So the first step in any sort of website design before you start jumping in and playing around digitally is literally to do little wireframes and layout examples of how you want to lay out all the information as well as get a copy deck ready so that you know what you want to say and what call to action you want to have on each module of your website. This does not have to be super long. You don't have to spend a super amount of time on it. I'm just doing really low fidelity wireframes. You can do high fidelity ones if you want to, but I just wanted a general layout. The next step when you do website design is obviously having your copy deck, which is all of the words, and then also images. Now, when you design for a website, your images have to be exported at a certain resolution for screens. If you have to export your images at 300 DPI, people are going to get very frustrated waiting for all your images to load. And on top of that, you're probably going to use up all their mobile data really quickly because they're trying to load these giant images. So always make sure that you export your images at the correct resolution. Obviously, because this is a passion project, I don't actually have the physical product. So I'm just using mockups to create products. To create these mockups, I actually just got copyright free images from Unsplash and I'm literally just going in and editing them and adding the logo and the pattern to these photos. So I'm not even using any sort of paid mockups or any ready-made mockups in general. So I'm just getting rid of all the previous designs that were on these photos and then replacing it with my Sunbliss packaging design and logo design. I chose these images because they align very much to the brand and the target audience that I'm targeting for this product. So now that I actually have a few product photos that will go on the website, I can start to lay out the designs in Figma. I personally like to use 1440 width when I do desktop designs for websites, but you don't have to stay confined to that exact width. Now, once I've dragged and dropped all my images into Figma, the next step is to create all of my color styles and textiles. This will just help my workflow make it a lot faster to just be able to click on a textile or a color style and drag and drop it and align my entire website that way. This image actually needs to be extended so I can put copy on the left hand side and then we're going to put a gradient over it so that I can actually use the writing. And now I'm looking at what fonts I want to use to create hierarchy and an interesting modern website design. Finally, I have a heading font, a subheading font and then my body copy and I'm just aligning the sizes again just adding them all into textiles and now bringing back in that gradient so people can actually read the writing that's on top of the photo. For the photo on the landing page you can see it's obviously a clear blue sky so I don't need to add a gradient into that one. Now I'm going to add some buttons which is where the CTA or the call to action is going to go and that is going to lead into the shop where people can then purchase the sun cream. Obviously, if this was a real product, it's not, this is a passion project, but this is what it would look like. Moving on to the Discover Our Products. So I'm just putting the two products that they have, the SPF 30 and the SPF 50. And then I also just write a little explainer about what each of those products are best used for and who it will ideally suit. Moving on to the footer now, I had this idea of having just a plain text footer, but it looked a little bit boring. So I'm gonna come back to that later. Working on the menu bar at the top, it's always important to have a navigation menu bar where people can navigate throughout your website, especially if you have multiple pages. Going back into the footer now, I thought I'd play around a little bit more. Maybe I'll do a two column grid and put the logo on one and then have the shadows on the other. I quite like the idea of having shadows because it kind of reminds you to stay in the shade. And that is exactly what I did for the brand pattern for this branding project. It was a play on shade and textures and being in the sun and then being shaded. 
needed. I finally found a beautiful picture that I wanted to use for the footer. So the top images are more for being in the sunshine and in the sun and the bottom footer image is to show that you can also use this product in your everyday skincare routine even if you're not at the beach or in the sun directly. Moving back over to the header image I realized this blue is way too distracting because it is not in my color palette for this brand so I'm going to quickly drop it into Photoshop and mute the blues a bit by using the selective color tool so I just changed that blue and made it align a lot more with my color scheme and it just looks so soft and beautiful. So now that I have the website design done in Figma the difficult part comes when you actually have to develop the website. Now I know coding can be really confusing and take a lot of time so I'm going to show you a really quick and easy tool that you can use without code to develop your website. So we're going to log into Framer and download their Figma to Framer HTML plugin. So I'm going to create a new project in Framer. I'm going to align it to my 1440 desktop sizing, the width. So then I'm going to go back to Figma, select everything in my design, go to plugins, select Figma to HTML Framer plugin. And as you can see here at the bottom, it says it's copying all 37 of my layers or 39 of my layers. It's copied them. I'm going to go back into Framer and click paste and it's quickly uploading. So it pops up with an explainer video. So there it is on YouTube, but we're not going to watch that. So let's go back to our design and I'm just going to scroll down to elongate the frames. And here we have a full website in Framer. Now, as you can see, it's copied really accurately. I can see the pattern's opacity is a little different. So we just need to manually tweak that quickly. But for the most part, this is exactly what my Figma design looked like, but it's just now in Framer. And using Framer, I can publish this and make it live. I noticed once I brought it through into Framer, I actually want to change a few of these elements, but it's okay because I can show you how easy it is to do that in Framer as well. Framer is basically a no-code website developing tool or website building tool. And you can also do design in it. So it's okay if you don't have Figma and you just want to use Framer to design and then develop, you can do that as well. But it's really cool because a lot of people do use Figma to design their websites like me. This is a great way to literally select, click, copy, paste, and boom, <laughs> I've got a working website. So I'm just going to do a few little changes and now I've previewed it and here's the website. So if I had to click publish right now, this is what it would look like, which is really cool. But the only problem is my buttons have not been linked. So I'm going to go in and create a component from my buttons. Obviously, you can do this in Figma as well, as well as auto layout in Figma. But I didn't do that because I want to show you how easy it is to actually do it in Framer. So you can choose which platform you would prefer to do it in. So here I'm just creating a button component and I'm adding some variants as well. And then I'm just dragging and dropping those variants throughout the website design and then I'm going to show you how we can link these buttons but first we need to create the hover state and the selection state so that's what I'm doing here quickly I'm renaming it let's do another preview it's looking pretty good the buttons are working the hover state is working so now I'm going to click publish and update before I show you the publish thing I also just want to show you all the different things that you can do with Framer so you can also change your domain and you can also connect your own domain. So if you have a domain somewhere, you can just align it. You can also add a favicon and a social preview. You can also do password protection. So you can do a lot of things all within Framer itself without having to hire a developer or learn how to code directly. So it's really cool. And over here, you can add SEO as well. So you can do all the back end of stuff directly from Framer itself. So you won't need to add in any additional plugins to actually edit the back end of your site like this. It's all done from Framer directly. You can also use light and dark mode, whichever you prefer. Personally, I prefer dark mode because my eyes, oh my goodness, they burn when they're in light mode. Does anyone else get that? Anyway, and I also just want to quickly show you that you can insert the existing designs in Framer as well. So you don't have to import from Figma into Framer. And there's a bunch of layout examples. So it's a pretty cool all round tool. So the next step is obviously to add in a few little animations into my site. So if I want something to glide in or slowly appear or any of that, I can add any of those animations in now that it's actually in Framer. And I'm also creating some stacks. So it's got a bit of auto layout, which makes it responsive because you want to have a responsive design. And on top of that, I'm also adding scroll animations so I can link my buttons to certain scrolls. A scroll example would be like an anchor. So you can anchor a title on like an about page and it will scroll to that page. That's why it's called a scroll. I also decided to quickly just drag and drop and recreate the shop page because then I can link my buttons to the shop page. 
so we are quickly going to do that and now when i go into my main components of my buttons i can link it and when you do your buttons obviously you need to reformat them so currently they set to this blue color by default so i'm just doing the three variations the default the hover and the current state of each of those buttons in the menu so those have been aligned and i'm just going to do that on the home page as well because i forgot to do that earlier so there we go i'm just linking all of these making sure that they are all on the correct state and they are so that's great now we're going to click preview again and i'm really liking how this is looking and this really hasn't taken me very long at all it's really nice because i use figma mainly for designing but i don't develop usually you would hire your developer and then add them to your team and then they would then develop and then do all of that but this way i can do this all by myself and it's really quick and easy as well now i'm just doing a few more rearranging and i want to show you this cool image for point that they have so i've replaced all of the images and i've turned each of the backgrounds of my frames into images themselves that's just a lot better when it comes to responsiveness it's the better option instead of placing your image inside the frame just create the background of the frame but i want to show you this really cool tool is they have an image focal point view so when you have a frame set to a background image you can select this image focal point and you can click where you want the focal point of the background of your image to be which is super cool because sometimes if you align it to the top there's too much on the bottom and if you align it to the bottom there's too much on the top and then the center is not always centered so by having the focal point i can select exactly where i want the image to show at all times so again i don't have to code it to do that which is nice because usually on like wordpress for example if you're using a builder there you actually have to set in the code and then align it to the center of exactly where you want it to be. But on frame, it's literally just a click of a button and you click save. <laughs> so I don't need to learn or input any sort of additional code into the site. So let's preview one more time again. And I'm just going to change this a little bit, making sure this is all aligned. Do a little copy tweak. And I think it's looking really good. I'm really happy with this. I think we're pretty much at the end of this now. I have put links into all of my buttons and into the menu and I'm making sure it all works and I've added a few little animations and some scrolls so it's looking really good we're going to click update and go back into view and here you can see that it is responsive so I've moved it in and you can see the copy is always readable or legible at all times and I've zoomed it back out now and it's aligned so that's also really nice as you can make responsive designs with this which is obviously super important nowadays if you want to see how easy framer really is to use you can click the link in the description below and you can use my code handsealer to get 25 percent off your first three months with the mini and basic site subscription thank you so much to framer for reaching out and showing me how easy it is to actually build and develop sites without having to rely on a developer i have full control over my website designs and the development of it and then publishing them online. I hope you enjoyed watching my process in creating a website design and that you will try it yourself as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or drop a comment if you want to know more about Framer or have any questions. Obviously, I am a graphic designer and over the years, I have taught myself how to use website design. Sometimes it can be really scary, but with tools available such as Framer, it makes the process a lot easier. And in turn, tools like these help grow my confidence as a graphic designer because I'm able to learn new skills and offer new skills to my potential clients. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon. Bye!